So about a year ago, I made a video explaining how hybrid turbochargers such as those on Formula One cars work. And I recently checked up on this video and it seems like there's a lot of comments of people thinking that I have my turbo layout wrong or not actually understanding what the turbocharger layout is on a real engine. So today I'm just gonna go through and show you the basics of a standard turbocharger system. Today we're going to be going through the layout of a turbocharger system on my race buggy. So you can see there, that's the turbocharger there at the back of the engine bay. And because the engine bay is relatively exposed, we can actually see what's going on here. So we can see here that this is where our air comes in. That's our air filter. Goes up through here, through um, our mass airflow meter that tells us how much air is going into the engine. Goes along, goes through our air intake, and this is probably a lot, a lot simpler on a lot of more vertical engines than this Subaru Boxer engine. But we can see here, if you follow the blue through, the blue comes through to here, which is the compressor housing, this silver bit here. And from there, there's a, a little compressor wheel in there that spins. That compressor wheel shoots pressurized air out of here, along there, up to the back of the intercooler. It then blows through the intercooler, through the front, through to, um, the throttle body down here, so you can see, move that, that's the throttle body, um, which then brings it into the inlet manifold. And from the manifold, it goes into the cylinders. From the cylinders, it goes down to the exhaust manifold, which then pipes up, pipes up up here into the turbine. And the turbine basically just contains another spinning turbine wheel. Um, this is the turbine housing here. And the spinning wheel of the turbine powers the spinning wheel of the compressor. The whole system is regulated by what we call a wastegate, which is basically this little springy thing that I'm activating here. So the wastegate valve is in here. This is known as an internally gated turbo because we have our wastegate inside our uh, turbine housing. You can also have externally gated turbos. Uh, that's a different scenario, but they both work on the same sort of principle. So from there, exhaust can throw out the main exhaust here or out the wastegate pipe here. And the wastegate flapper valve is controlled by this diaphragm here. So if we want less boost, we open the wastegate more, and opening it more bypasses more air past the turbine. Turbine won't work as hard, therefore it doesn't push the compressor as hard, so we get less boost. Now, the wastegate itself is actuated by this little diaphragm up here. The diaphragm has a hose that connects around to the outlet of the compressor, so whatever boost the compressor is making on the outside is piped around to this diaphragm. Once that boost exceeds the pressure that's applied by the spring in here, it will force open this wastegate valve. Therefore, it's kind of a self-regulating system. We can modify the amount of pressure that's applied by this here, which is our boost solenoid. Now, the boost solenoid, um, basically, in this case, it is a two-port boost solenoid. This can bleed off um, air from in here, which means less pressure is applied to the, uh, the wastegate diaphragm, which means that less force is put on the spring, so the, the valve is less likely to open. And that's how the wastegate operates. Now, of course, on the inside of the duct, we can see here the intercooler. Now, that's the intercooler up top, the throttle body there, and here we have the what is known as the bypass valve. The bypass valve bleeds air off the intercooler when there's an overpressure with respect to the manifold. Now you can see that little hose connects down to the manifold and the intercooler has significantly more pressure than the manifold as if the throttle is being closed. Then the bypass valve opens and passes the air out underneath the engine over to in front of the compressor wheel. And that way it circles air through the entire air system on the inlet side and that way you don't lose as much spool when the throttle gets closed. Well, thanks for watching. Hopefully this video cleared up any misconceptions you may have on the turbo system layout. And if you are a fan of mine or if this video helped you out, maybe go across to that other video and see if you can give that a like, because currently it's looking not so great on the like to dislike ratio and I'm not quite sure why. Hopefully, see you next time.